Hello, I'm Richard Jones and I'd like to talk to you about the emerging smart city strategy in Peterborough. We've been working on the strategy for the last two years with support from the Cambridgeshire and Peterborough Combined Authority um, and working very closely with Vivacity over this time. The purpose of the strategy is really to make best use of um, the, the evolution of real time data opportunities um, over the last few years to help us to better manage our transport network. So essentially the evolving smart city strategy will allow Peterborough to capitalise on developments in the availability of real time data to improve the operation and efficiency of its transport network. The strategy is ultimately working towards a dynamically managed highway network. Um, driven by a Peterborough wide model that's able to respond uh, to real time conditions with or without human supervision. We have four objectives of the strategy. So there's four issues that we're trying to address within our transport network. Um, the first is capacity. So we have a significant amount of growth planned within Peterborough over the coming years. Historically, we've been one of the fastest growing cities in England for the last five or ten years. Um, and we need to be able to accommodate the additional growth that's going to come from that development. Um, so the strategy, one objective of the strategy is to provide capacity for the growth. Um, the second objective is around public transport and prioritising the movement of public transport through key corridors in our highway network. The third objective is network resilience. Uh, we have quite a small transport network within Peterborough, we're quite a small authority, um, and although we have a highly efficient network at the moment, um, it is susceptible to incidents. Um, and one small incident can have a very, uh, very profound effect on the wider network very quickly. So we're looking for the strategy to help support and improve our network resilience. Um, and the final objective is around operation efficiency. So using technology and using real time data to ensure that our transport network is operating as smoothly and as efficiently as possible. The strategy is designed to operate on three layers. Um, the first of those is kind of the, the macro layer, which is uh, we've termed citywide monitoring. Um, so this is looking across the city as a whole uh, and collecting data that gives us information that we could use for things such as network KPIs. So developing a suite of KPIs that measure and monitor the performance and the health of the network in real time. Uh, and that information can be used to identify where, where funding uh, and improvements are required. Uh, and then also to monitor the impact of uh, funding and investment into the network, so post scheme monitoring effectively. Um, second purpose of the citywide monitoring is for a high level strategic overview. So this is to provide network managers with an overview of how the city's transport network is performing in real time. And it's not just uh, around things like traffic flow, but potentially around kind of air quality, noise emissions, um, any metric really that we can bolt into the strategy. Uh, and finally, it's for incident management, which ties back into the point I just made around network resilience. So it's enabling us to understand um, once we've had an incident on the network, and that might be um, an unexpected incident, such as a collision um, or a crash, or it might be something like planned roadworks. It's to enable us to understand as highway and network managers very quickly what impact that incident is having so that we can best plan to mitigate against it. The next tier of the strategy or the next layer is route based management or as we call them corridor strategies. Um, so this is to use the strategy to create responsive ITS plans. Um, so using the ITS equipment that we have deployed along various corridors uh, more efficiently so that it can better respond to real time conditions. They may be regular daily conditions that we would expect such as peak hour. Uh, traffic or it may be unexpected incidences responding to um, a, again a vehicle collision um, a, and giving the the ITS network the flexibility to adapt very quickly to unexpected changes. Uh, the second purpose of the route based management corridor strategies is around information dissemination so enabling us as an authority to give network users real time information as quickly and as efficiently as possible to enable them to better plan their journeys and to avoid any potential issues that are developing on the network, be it regular congestion or again, unexpected incidents. Um, and finally, around public transport prioritisation. So, so this is the level of the strategy where we can best influence um, public transport prioritisation and ensure that we can kind of prioritise the, the movement of buses and other forms of public transport through the network as efficiently as possible. And finally, the third tier of the strategy is something that we call location specific interventions. So this is where we're using the smart city strategy um, and data and technology at a very localized level to try and overcome specific issues that we have on the network. And some of these may be issues that we've tried to address historically through conventional um, 
kind of transport interventions um, and struggled to do so. Um, and a few examples of these location specific interventions in Peterborough are around the city hospital, where we get sort of very, very heavy uh, congestion at different times of the day associated with, for example, uh, staff shifts or visitor times. Um, and then also, for example, outside the football ground on match day, um, when you'll have a, a very um, sudden influx of, of users, pedestrians as well as vehicles coming into a very small area over a very sort of short period of time. Um, so they're the three layers that the strategy is designed to work upon. Um, you know, it's still an evolving strategy. There's still a lot of work to do to define exactly how it will look in the years to come. And the idea is that it remains open and flexible to respond to uh, changes in technology or changes within the needs of the city. Um, and in terms of the strategy development, we're currently undertaking two trials at the moment, um, which I'll talk through briefly now. The first of those is the Oundle Road Corridor Trial. So this began in 2019 and is currently ongoing. So Oundle Road is an A road that runs east to west through the south of the city. Um, and we're particularly interested in the section between Neen Parkway and Lynchwood. So Neen Parkway is part of our parkway, uh, strategic parkway network, and it carries a large number of uh, peak hour trips. And, and in the AM and PM peak hours, a lot of those trips are going to the Lynchwood Business Park, which is a busy business park in the southwest of Peterborough that employs many thousands of people. Um, at the moment, a lot of those trips will travel via Oundle Road, which is the route shown in red. Um, and as a transport um, and highway authority, you know, we'd like to shift a lot of those trips onto the Blue Route, which is our strategic parkway network where we have far more capacity. We don't really want trips using the red route if possible. Um, it's It's got a secondary school and two primary schools on it and large amounts of residential uh, and housing. Um, and you know, the, the blue route, you know, we've got a wealth of data that shows that the blue route is typically 50% faster than the red route. So purpose of the strategy here, and this is one of our route based uh, management corridors is to try and influence road users to come from the red route and move on to the blue route. To do that, we've deployed 13 of Vivacity's AI sensors along the corridor. Um, they went in in 2019 with funding supplied by the Cambridgeshire and Peterborough Command Authority, and they're equipped with AMPR capability. Um, so these sensors are tracking traffic volumes and journey times along both routes. Um, and over the last year, we've collected a wealth of data um, around the, the, the kind of the journey time on the two competing routes that we can then use as an evidence base um, to develop our corridor plan along. Um, we spent the last year validating this data set, um, again, both the traffic count and the journey time data against independent data sets and sources that we have to hand um, within the council. Um, and the Vivacity sensors perform extremely well, um, and in many cases outperform the other data sources that we have. Um, so now that we've built up this database, we are gonna be developing a corridor plan, um, and that will include measures such as VMS, um, enabling us to relay information to road users about journey times along the two corridors and to advertise the parkway when it's the quicker of the two routes. Uh, dynamic traffic signal control, so using our ITS assets to try and uh, control and regulate the speed of movement along Oundle Road, maybe penalizing it uh, where we need to, to encourage again trips to transfer onto the quicker parkway route. Um, and also to address some of the safety concerns that we have with the parkway slip roads where traffic trying to get onto Oundle Road is queuing back onto the parkway. Um, and, and finally, the corridor strategy might include um, physical works such as traffic calming, again, just to influence um, speeds along the two competing routes um, and slow the red route, Oundle Road down, um, again, adding favour to the blue route. Um, not an exhaustive list of potential measures, uh, but just some of the tools that we're looking at as part of this trial. The second trial I'd like to quickly mention is our Smart Junction trial. Um, this began in April um, and again, working very closely with Vivacity to develop this trial. Um, we've chosen the location of the um, London Road and Fletton Avenue Junction in the south of Peterborough, so it's just south of the city centre directly outside the football stadium. Um, and we've chosen this particular site because it's been identified as a site that is currently operating quite well on mover. Um, so because it's operating well on mover, that gives us the opportunity to have a really fair comparison between mover and the vivacity sensors um, and kind of the, the programming behind that, that we can then trial the, the junction operation on. Um, it has all the hallmarks of a busy city centre junction. So we have peak hour congestion, as well as the issues that I mentioned um, just a moment ago around the football grounds. Um, and it also provides the opportunity to really trial um, the potential use of the Vivacity Smart Junction here 
um, to prioritise different modes of transport. So although we have peak hour congestion, we also have a high number of pedestrians and cyclists, particularly off peak. Um, so we can play around here with um, reprioritising the traffic signals to um, sustainable modes of transport outside of those critical peak hours. Um, and why we're undertaking the trial, we're really undertaking the trial at this location to try and understand what potential benefit we can get from the Vivacity Smart Junction um, over traditional forms of junction control. Um, and hopefully it's a success. And if it is a success, that means that, you know, smart junctions become one of the tools that we can build into our toolkit for uh, Peterborough's uh, smart cities transport strategy. Um, in terms of measures of success, initially we'll be looking at things like journey time reduction, um, which can potentially be used in future to build into a, a wider business case for the smart uh, cities um, rollout and the deployment of the wider strategy. Um, and we're also going to expand the trial, like I mentioned just a moment ago, to kind of um, look at the potential for reprioritising um, nodes around the junction. And then just a little bit on the timeline. Um, so the first three months of the trial were very much around designing, preparing and installing the smart junction. The, the install went ahead on the 12th of April. Um, and we're now in that next period, which is uh, three to six months where we are collecting data um, and we're building the, the simulation um, that will ultimately control the smart junction and validating that simulation against network conditions, um, real time conditions on the site. Um, months six to nine, so that'll be towards the back end of the summer and rolling into the autumn, we'll be training the AI that's going to control the junction. Um, and from nine months onward, um, you know, we're going to hopefully be able to control the junction using that AI. Um, and then once we hit 12 months, so we've had three months of the smart junction operating under AI. Um, we will be reviewing the data um, and hopefully um, if everything goes as successfully as we hope, um, we can start building up a wider business case, like I said, for rolling this out as part of our broader smart cities strategy across the city. Thank you very much for listening. Just wanted to provide a brief overview of what we're doing in Peterborough um, and the support that we've received from Vivacity over the last couple of years in developing the broader strategy and some of our localised trials. Um, and if anybody would like any further information about what we are doing here, by all means, please contact me. Uh, my email address is richard.jones at milestoneinfra.co.uk. Thank you very much. Bye.